Hello everyone, hope all of you are fine and doing really well. We are here to continue the lectures of pharmacology through the platform of Pharmacology Norse and it is delivered by registered pharmacist Romera Shahi. So we are studying about neurotransmitters. We have discussed that neurotransmitter is a type of a chemical which is used to communicate between nerve cell to nerve cell and nerve cells to effector cells. Yes, there are multiple types of neurotransmitters. Some act very fastly and some act slowly on their effective sites. And among these neurotransmitters which are present in nature, there are epinephrine, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, glutamate, histamine, gamma aminobutyric acid. There are multiple neurotransmitters which are present in our body. So the next thing we were going to discuss that was the effect of neurotransmitters. So let's have a look at epinephrine or it is also called adrenaline. Why it's called adrenaline? Because it is released from adrenal medulla. Adrenaline. So how this epinephrine or adrenaline act, act and cause neurotransmission? right now first of all this adrenaline or this epinephrine is one among the catecholamines there are four catecholamines epinephrine norepinephrine dopamine and dobutamine. These are the okay, these are stances which are having catechol ring in their structures. That's why these are termed as catechol amines. Amines having catechol structures. Among these catechol amines, these first three they are naturally acting, and while this one it is synthetic. So, epinephrine is a naturally acting catecholamine which is synthesized from precursor tyrosine and where it is synthesized in adrenal medulla that's why termed as adrenaline. Getting it? Okay. Now, adrenal medulla. Yes, some kidney. There is present a gland that is termed as adrenal medulla, and in this adrenal medulla, they resynthesize a hormone. Uh, sorry, they uh, synthesize a neurotransmitter that is termed as epinephrine, and from where it comes, what is the precursor? Precursor is thyroid. See, yes, it is synthesized in the adrenal medulla from the precursor tyrosine. Tyrosine is a precursor. This is adrenal medulla. As epinephrine is synthesized from the tyrosine in adrenal medulla, then it is released into the bloodstream how it occurs that there is a tyrosine tyrosine undergo conversion into dopa this dopa converted into dopamine and then this dopamine is converted into epinephrine yes as this epinephrine is synthesized in adrenal medulla, then this epinephrine is sent into systemic circulation. This will move into circulation. Right? And from the circulation, it will reach to its target sites or it will reach to the effector sites. 
He has got it. Now, as adrenaline has been released into the bloodstream and it has reached to the target cells, then what action it will show? What are the effects which will be produced? So let's see the effects of adrenaline first of all on cardiovascular system. Yes, cardiovascular system. In the case of fight or flight, adrenaline is or epinephrine is a neurotransmitter which is released in the case of fight or flight, or it is released when we are under the stress condition, right? So keep in mind that epinephrine. Epinephrine is released when we are under stress or in case of fight or flight means when our body needs a certain changes we need a more blood supply or we need to be more active than regular keep it right now, first of all, the tissue on which we will see the effect, that is cardiovascular. From the heart, now if neuroepinephrine uh, is coming and it's acting on target site, where it acts, it acts on adrenergic receptors and which adrenergic receptor is present on heart, Yes, on heart, it's having a predominantly beta receptors. There's atria, ventricle, here are SC node, AV node, you can see fibers, and then myocardium. All these are having beta 1 receptors predominantly. There's beta 1 receptor here. Beta 1 receptor here and beta 1 receptor on myocardium as well. So whenever adrenaline reaching through the blood reaches the sites and act on beta 1 receptors in SA node, it will cause increased rate of contractility. This epinephrine comes to heart, comes to SA node, stimulate beta 1 receptors, increase the rate of contractility and increase the rate of contractility will cause increased heart rate and this is termed as positive chronotropic effect yes these are the effects on cardiovascular system that produces positive chronotropic effect Then, as it has gone, epinephrine to myocardium, it will cause increase in contraction, increase in stroke volume, right? It will cause increase contractility, not the rate, but contraction. So increased contractility will lead to increased drop volume and thus it will cause positive ionotropic effect. It will produce positive ionotropic effect. So on hard it produces positive chronotropic effect and positive ionotropic effect. Then if, if we come to the bronchioles, yes, that what ha happens in the bronchioles, when we are under the stress condition, we are under the fight and flight conditions, then we need more oxygen supply, right? So on bronchioles, it will produce bronchodilation. And by bronchodilation, it will increase the oxygen supply to the alveoli. How it occurs that beta receptors are predominantly present on the smooth muscles, smooth muscles of bronchioles. Adrenaline acts on those beta two receptors and cause bronchodilation and increase the supply of oxygen to alveoli. Right? Yes. 
it will cause bronchial smooth muscles dilation how this dilation occurs that on bronchial smooth muscles there is present beta 2 receptors these are bronchioles and on these bronchioles there is present smooth muscles if i draw this here the muscle the bronchiole sorry and then muscles here on these muscles there are present beta 2 receptors as this beta 2 receptor is activated these smooth muscles will be inhibited and will be that relaxed thus it will cause bronchodilation and increase the oxygen supply right on heart it produces positive chronotropic effect positive inotropic effect on bronchial is called bronchodilation what it does to the glucose as in the fight or flight condition we need more glucose we need the stores to release more glucose in the blood so obviously which receptor should be present there there should be beta 2 glucose metabolism glucose is converted into glycogen and stored and when our, our body needs this glycogen through the beta 2 receptors activation it undergoes glycogenolysis and this converts again glycogen to glucose and this glucose is transferred to the blood right so for this mechanism this needs to be activated and for this we need epinephrine as a neurotransmitter to send the signals to these beta receptors that increase glucose in the blood right same happens in the lipids it adrenaline through the beta receptors cause lipolysis and increase the free fatty acids and glycerols yes it also increases free fatty acids and glycerols fourth is lipolysis whenever there is adrenaline released into blood and it has reached to the beta 2 receptors beta receptors and these beta receptors has activated adenylyl cyclase adenylyl cyclase these adenylyl cyclase helps to convert ATP to cyclic AMP as this cyclic AMP is needed to stimulate the hormone sensitive lipase. It will activate lipase which will cause triglycerol, triglycerol conversion into free fatty acids and cholesterol. And these free fatty acids are then can be absorbed through the intestine and will be a source of energy clear so um, epinephrine and neurotransmitters have its effects on heart positive positive chronotropic effect and inotropic effect on bronchioles called bronchodilation increase the glucose in the blood and cause increased fatty fat free fatty acids so these free fatty acids could be source of energy hopefully it's clear if there is any question you can ask in the comments Thank you for watching the video. Keep watching for further for further